Cameras make zero sense. You press a button and all of a sudden any singular moment in time at any point in space is immortalized in a mere piece of paper. Jit crazy. What's even crazier is they're actually pretty simple. Imagine you want to take a picture of a giant banana and all you have is a really big cardboard box. Well, your cardboard box can't take a picture. Shocking. I know. This is because the light reflecting from the banana is scattering, coming in from all directions. But if you close your box and poke a small hole in it, something interesting happens. You see your banana projected upside down in the box. What's happening? Well, unlike the open box, the scattered light from the banana is no longer coming in from all directions. Instead, only the light that hits right in this little hole can come in. And that looks like this. The light from the top of the banana perfectly gets in the hole going downward, and the banana frick and the bottom perfectly gets in the hole going upward this gives you an upside down projection cool beans but how do we save that projection as a picture well if we take some paper slather it with some chemicals that really don't like light and change brightness based on how much light it receives then tape that magic paper to your cardboard box wait a while take it out nice but this method is just a little bit outdated so how do digital cameras like a dslr take a photo well the process is actually pretty similar only entirely different there are three big components to a dslr camera the aperture the shutter and the black magic sensor Step one, the aperture. This is the stuff you find inside the lens. The lens has little glass disc stuff called lenses that basically focuses the light rays into what's called a focal point. Remember that, it's important. The aperture itself is a Star Wars blast door looking thing. This is similar to the hole from the cardboard box example. If you make the blast door smaller, less light can come in and you get a darker photo. Open the blast door up, more light can come in and you get a brighter photo, but it also controls the depth of field, or in other words, makes some stuff blurry and some stuff not. How the frick does that work? Well, remember how I was talking about a focal point from earlier? Well, if an object is in perfect focus, by the time the light from said object hits the sensor, the light is singular to one point, and this can depend on distance and the blast door. For example, say I have an ultra rare vintage attack armor Batman action figure right here and an apple three feet in front of it. If I adjust the aperture to make it so the apple has a perfect focal point, since the Batman is further, its light is going to start scattering again before it hits the sensor, making it blurry. Now, if I adjust the aperture to make it so less light can come in, the Batman now reaches its focal point once it reaches the sensor, but now the apple reaches the sensor too early, also making it slightly blurry. But the sensor isn't just right behind the aperture, because then you would have no way of getting a preview of the image. So what's in between these two things? 